the people that, that Joe Biden is considering. He has a, a few people on the table. And some of them, as I say, are just overtly left wing pegs. The, the, the most likely person is this woman named Ketanji Brown Jackson, who is 51 years old. So she'll be on the court for the next 40 years. She has Ivy League credentials. She went to Harvard Law. She clerked for the, uh, she went to the Harvard Law Review. She's an editor there. She clerked for three federal judges, including Justice Breyer himself from 99 to 2000. If nominated and confirmed, according to the Washington Post, Jackson will follow the same track as Brett Kavanaugh, who also clerked for the justice. He ultimately replaced. And also Jackson is coming directly from the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, which is typically seen as the sort of theater circuit for the Supreme Court of the United States, right? The D.C. Circuit is where you get appointed before they put you into the Supreme Court of the United States. And the other picks that are being considered, one of them is Cheryl Eiffel, who is the head of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Right? Again, this is something that Democrats will do. Democrats will actively go to, to constituent groups, and then they will be like, who's your best lawyer? Let's just put that person on the court. Imagine if a conservative president went to Cato Institute and was like, we need Ilya Shapiro. Just give it. Or imagine if they just went to Daily Wire and they were like, we need Ben, right? Like, this would never happen on the right because the right doesn't have the stones for this. But the left absolutely has the stones for this because for the left, again, the Supreme Court is just another political branch so they can do whatever the hell they want. That is all they care about. Getting what they want is all they care about. Uh, again, this is why Republicans miss 50% of the time. And so here's the thing. If the left is going to treat the Supreme Court like a political body, the right should overtly treat the Supreme Court like the political body that it is. That does not mean that they should treat it exactly the same way because the Supreme, when I say that the Supreme Court should be treated like a political body, what I mean is that the left has decided rules of constitutional interpretation do not apply. This means the right can no longer afford to play footsie in future judicial picks. We cannot have picks like Justice Roberts. We cannot have picks like Brett Kavanaugh. We cannot have picks who are ciphers. Okay, you can't have picks not knowing which way they're going to go. You have to have people who have gone through the wars, who have gone through the battles, and if you have to pass them through with 51 votes, you pass them through with 50 plus one. That's what Democrats are going to do right here. Right now, the, the real reason, by the way, that Breyer stepped down is, of course, because Democrats are about to get their asses kicked in 2022. Now, come November, it's not going to be a Democratic Senate anymore. Just like Justice Scalia died and then Merrick Garland was nominated by Barack Obama to fill his seat, but Mitch McConnell held up the seat. They're afraid the same thing could happen here with Stephen Breyer. So that's why Breyer is stepping down before November. What people should, really should read this as is not any sort of shock or any sort of surprise, because it's not. They should read it as Stephen Breyer isn't an idiot. And so Stephen Breyer decided I'm leaving before November, which underscores just how dumb Ruth Bader Ginsburg was not to step down while Barack Obama was president, waiting instead until the age of 87. She died in 2020. And of course, her seat was then filled by Donald Trump. Okay, so right now, according to The New York Times, Democrats could confirm a successor to Justice Stephen Breyer without any Republican support under Senate rules that shield the Supreme Court nomination from a filibuster, but would have to hold their bare majority together to do so. So basically, they have to rely on Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin in order to ram this through. I, I can't imagine that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin won't go along with the Democrats on this one because Harry Reid broke this thing a long time ago. Now, Harry Reid broke the, the idea that you could filibuster a judicial nominee years ago and and. That is what has created the current standard, which is that any sheer majority can just pass through whomever they want, right? Mitch McConnell then used that in order to ram through a bunch of Trump's judicial nominees. According to the New York Times, the announcement of Justice Breyer's imminent retirement on Wednesday set off a sprint by top Democrats to prepare for a coming confirmation fight over Biden's nominee to succeed him. It also prompted a collective sigh of relief from the party and its progressive allies who had worried that a Senate takeover by Republicans in the coming midterm elections could block the president from filling any vacancies. Senator Chuck Schumer, of course, said that Biden's nominee will receive a prompt hearing in the Senate Judiciary Committee and will be considered and confirmed by the full U.S. Senate with all deliberate speed. Now, you will recall that Democrats made precisely the opposite point in 2020, right? In 2020, they said, after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, how dare Republicans speed through a nomination? We must wait for an election. There must be an election. We have to have a new president before the RBG seat is filled. And Mitch McConnell's like, mm, well, I still got time on the calendar, so we're going for this thing. Same thing right here. So Democrats, if you held any consistent standard, which of course you don't, you would wait until the midterms. I'm not expecting you to wait until the midterms because I think McConnell did the right thing. When you have the majority, you ram it through. Democrats have the power to ram it through. They will ram it through. Okay, but just pointing out the wild inconsistency from the left right here, because the left's inconsistency here is truly amazing, right? Just, just a few months ago, this is not that long ago, end of 2020, Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, we have about eight weeks until the election, and Democrats say we must wait until the election so that people can speak on who they want to fill Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. And McConnell's like, nope, we're doing it. 
It will now, Democrats, shoes on the other foot, Democrats are doing the same thing. Because as always, when it comes to politics, for Democrats, it's just a power game. There is no principle whatsoever, like none. Democrats quickly called on Biden to follow through on his promise to nominate the first black woman to the court. Senator Patty Murray of Washington, the number three Democrat, said, I trust President Biden to move forward an exceptional nominee who will uphold all Americans' rights and liberties, including protecting voting rights and reproductive rights. See, they don't even bother with the with the legal jargon here. They're just like, yeah, we need abortion and uh, and we want the Voting Rights Act back in place. So whoever you can nominate to do those things would be great. I'm ready to move as quickly as possible, she says, to consider and confirm a highly qualified nominee who will break barriers and make history as the first black woman on the Supreme Court of the, like overt racism. Overt racism is totally fine, according to the left. And that, that really is the astonishing thing. I'd be remiss if I did not play some of the media reactions here. Of course, the media reactions are all about, we need a black lady. That's what we need. Now, I noticed they're not talking about any of the conservative black women that are out there. Right? And th those names will never come up. But uh, th what they really mean is we need a person who checks all of our political boxes and also is a black person who is female. So therefore, you have, for example, CNN's Laura Coates, who says, I'd be overjoyed to have somebody who looks like me on the court. She doesn't really mean that. What she really means is I'd have I'd be overjoyed to see somebody who looks like me and thinks like me on the court. Right. Because it's not sufficient to look like you. First of all, I think it's an absurdity that we even talk like this generally in American politics. It's never occurred to me that I need somebody who looks like me on the court. I need somebody with a yarmulke on the court. Why would I care if there's somebody with a yarmulke on the court? I'm perfectly happy with somebody who does the job. Not according to the left, however, because they have ditched Martin Luther King long ago for early Malcolm X. And here's Laura Coates. I would be overjoyed and thrilled to know that somebody who looks like me and has the mental prowess that each of these women have and the credibility, the capability, the uh, distinction of having served as judges and as extraordinary lawyers over their time would finally, and I emphasize the word finally, finally be given the opportunity to sit on the highest court in the land. Well, I mean, that's the important thing is that you have somebody who looks like you. What are we children here? A nation of children. Everybody has to look like you in order for them to be considered a good Supreme Court pick. My, my favorite is, uh, is, is how we have now decided to group together all of the other justices, right? The ideological diversity matters not for these people. So Earl Warren is the exact same thing as Byron White, who's the exact same thing as Justice Scalia, according to the left. They're all white men, right? Eli missed all over at MSNBC. He's like 108 of the 115 justices have been white men. Yes, and they had a wide variety of dispositions towards the law, as you may have noticed. I care what care, I really care what goes on more in the gray matter than in the melanin level of the skin. Also, I do like how you lump together all of the Jewish justices who were considered minority justices when they were appointed at the Louis Brandeis of, of the world. But none of that matters, according, according to the left. We're in a battle for the culture and for our values. Like and subscribe to help keep our videos on the front line of the fight and top of your feed.